Hello and welcome to the program. My name is Edith Magak. In today's episode, we will be meeting and talking to different organizations that provide solutions to respond to the challenges faced with people living with disabilities in Kenya. According to the latest population and housing census conducted in 2019, 2.2% 2 .2 of Kenyans above five years live with some form of disability. However, non-governmental organizations have termed these figures as inaccurate and dramatic underrepresentation. People with disabilities in Kenya have faced and still continue to face many challenges in accessing healthcare, education, employment, and many other services and opportunities. Data provided by the Public Service Commission on Employment of Persons with Disabilities indicated that in the financial year 2018-2019, only 1.18% of persons with disabilities were employed in the public service. Some factors responsible for this low employment rate include negative attitudes by employers, inaccessible physical environment, low educational attainment of persons with disabilities, and lack of information on job vacancies in accessible formats. But one organization in Kenya, Rizikisos, is working to change that narrative. Rizikisos is a company operating under the model of a social enterprise. Uh, with a mission to facilitate opportunities of employment to persons with disabilities. We, Rizikisos, has a vision to see that uh, persons with disability thrive in the work economy. Rizikisos was founded by a person with disability who himself went through certain challenges in his own pursuit of jobs. From that experience, he appreciated the gaps that are there, challenges that befall persons with disabilities in their endeavors to get employment opportunities. Samuel Muiti, communications officer at Rizikisos, takes us through the system, explaining how the process works and giving us back-end insights. So at Riziki Source, we enable persons with disabilities to access job opportunities by use of technology. And we have a disability-friendly website uh, that can be accessed by persons uh, with even visual impairment. So our website is www.rizikisource.org. So I look at it uh, from the job seeker's angle who wants to apply for job placement with us at Rizikisos. So this is our website. It's disability friendly such that um, when a person with low vision wants to uh, enlarge the fonts, it has uh, these two buttons to enlarge this one. So when you press like this, uh, you can see the texts expanding and even you can minimize the text uh, if you feel that uh, the, like the texts are too large for you. Uh, another thing, the uh, website is uh, readable by a software called Jews that is used by uh, visually impaired users that enables them to read uh, the text. So we have minimized the uh, photographs uh, to enable them to uh, get uh, whatever uh, is in this website. So a job seeker who is uh, looking for employment opportunities, uh, it's easy to register with us. Uh, we have three modes of registering. And the, because we strive to ensure that we use technology because not everyone can be able to submit our CVs from wherever he is. So we enable you to use uh, this uh, technology to submit your CVs so that we can facilitate uh, the contact between job seekers and um, employers. So it's is easy to register. So you come here, we have a sign in button. You click. So you scroll down to this point. 
three ways to register, you'll see the three main ways. Uh, the reason why we have this SMS mode is because uh, someone ha might not be having uh, a smartphone and he's a, or she is a job seeker. So that one will enable such person to access uh, our services with or without a smartphone or a internet. So to register using this website, you come here to register. So you will be asked your name, national ID, your gender, and all these are details. So after uh, filling these details and attaching your CV, you click to register, and then we shall have your details on our database to enable us place a different uh, categories of job seekers with the available job opportunities. Uh, once uh, the job seeker registers with us, uh, so we get the information on our database. And this database is purely uh, confidential. It's run by one person. So uh, we have uh, the uh, distribution of applicants. We do what we call fi filtering the database. So we come if the person Let's say the employer wants a nurse who is a physically or any type of dis disability. We use the details we have here to do the job placements. So at Riziki Source, uh, we are all inclusive. We have all categories of disability, uh, physical, um, those are with uh, visual impairment, hearing impaired, uh, referred commonly as deaf, and many other. So in terms of um, gender distribution, we have a chart that shows uh, different colors uh, representing uh, the number of uh, people uh, or the gender represented. We have male, female, and intersex. So currently at Riziki Source, we have um, 1,030 registered job seekers. Those are purely persons with disabilities. And then we have employers like right now we have um, 28 employers who have registered with us. We have a gender a representation of persons with disabilities. We have a male. Uh, the male gender is indicated with this uh, green color. Currently we have 816 male uh, job seekers. The female uh, are represented with this color. We currently, uh, currently have uh, 239, and we also have intersex. We have four intersex uh, job seekers. And then uh, in terms of counties, so he, these are the counties. This is a chart representing all counties in Kenya. As you can see, Nairobi has the largest share of job seekers. We are trying to reach out to more counties because we want to reach out to vulnerable groups in the rural areas. So Nairobi uh, gets the highest number because we are around Nairobi at the moment. Since we were founded, we have been able to place 300 people successfully. For the year 2021, we have been able to place 20 people in various establishments. Riziki Sources successfully placed people with disabilities in private and public sectors, small and medium enterprises. We get the privilege to meet and speak with one of the beneficiaries at his place of employment. My name is James Obonio Hillary. I've been working at CMA for three years and three months. The CMA is a financial regulatory agency that actually is involved in developing and monitoring of the capital markets with the major objectives being uh, protection of investors and creating of regulations to ensure an order and efficient market. How I got the job at CMA starts with a referral to Riziki Source, which is a social enterprise that deals with uh, looking for employment opportunities for people with disabilities. So the referral came from a friend of mine who I had met back in the day. And uh, as we were discussing, uh, she came to mention about uh, Riziki source and what it does. So with that, uh, I went and researched about Riziki, found it on the internet, and 
there was a whole lot of explanation on how you'd register and through the process to, to getting a job. So from there, actually, I went to the internet where now I opened an account, got my details there, my resume, and my qualifications. After which I was reached out by Riziki source contact person where I, I signed a contract. And then after that, I was told that I was to, to be informed. In any case, there will be a position. Modes of operation would be, they'd call you and they'd want to help you be ready for an interview when it comes. So now with that, uh, I will, uh, at the time I was in Kisumu and uh, Riziki source, the offices are in Nairobi. So the only means we would have communicated or actually corresponded was via email. And that's the point where now uh, the contact person from Riziki helps me spruce up my resume, had it in the format that actually is market ready for employment. Navigating through the Riziki webpage is as easy as it gets because it's user friendly. Where now uh, it's a, it's a step by step application where they they guide you through on what to do until the point where you have to upload your resume, roughly a week, uh, of which now I was I was referred to National Council of People with Disabilities Career Portal, where now CMA had actually reached out. If at all there were candidates from uh, the National Council. To, to submit their, their applications, yeah. So with that, I think uh, Riziki directed me towards that direction, which I got to know, and then I made the application through that. But for James, getting employed at the Capital Markets Authority is not the end of the road. More than what he is hired to do, he's also an SDG champion and a member of the Disability Mainstreaming Committee at his place of work. He tells us more about it. So at the CMA, until recently, I was invited and uh, I accepted to be in the Disability Mainstreaming Committee. This is the committee that ensures uh, there's inclusivity and there's a favorable workplace for PWDs. And with that, it was evident that if at all there was a committee, then probably I would provide the kind of voice that would be needed in uh, trying to make them achieve the objective, which essentially would be the creation and the review of the disability policy at our workplace. As an SDG champion, I would say I'm an impact analyst. And with that, it, it goes to the SDG 2030, which are the goals that have been set by UN to deliver a more sustainable world by the by, by, by 2030. So now with that, with my background in finance, I, I grew a lot of interest in financial inclusion. Financial inclusion is where everyone is included in financial products that include bank loans, insurance, for economic empowerment to say. And so with that, you'd find financial inclusion anchors in most of the SDG goals that have been set out by UN. So with that, it, it augurs well with uh, where I'd want to be professionally coming future. And that's why my inclusion in SDG is pretty deep. As a Riziki source, we gauge the level of acceptance of the program we are rolled out. And this one, we can check on the number of inquiries that are coming in on the number of registrations that we currently have in our database, and the actual number of placement opportunities that we have been able to secure. You can also find people calling numbers, asking for assistance, trying to understand what we are doing, explaining the problems that they are going through in pursuit of job opportunities. If you put all these things together, they can be used to gauge the impact that we are having mm. as a Riziki source within the disability community. Remember, this is an advocacy program. Mm. We are dealing with a society that is not used to seeing personal disabilities the ordinary way mm. things are supposed to be seen. So 
If, for example, you can find opportunities numbering 20 within the year, to me, that one still is an achievement because we are dealing with a society that perceives things related to disability in a different way. Mm -hmm. We maintain a close interest on the people we have enabled to get opportunities. These are our ambassadors. James is our ambassador there. If he does a good job, we are happy. When he does a good job, the message comes back to us. Somebody is likely to say, we are hiring again. Give us more people. By James joining that committee is as a result of those people having seen qualities in him. Despite the disability, There is no doubt that Riziki Source is doing a great job to integrate persons with disabilities in the workplace, but it is not a perfect solution. James and Kennedy share with us a few challenges and limitations they have faced and still face with this response. The challenges are quite minimal and uh, the major one would be the geographical barrier because uh, like I said, Riziki Source, they have their main offices at, uh, in Nairobi actually and at the time I was in Kisumu. So as much as they would want to help, or rather even help you be ready for an interview, the, the barrier, which is the distance, would, I would say that would, was the main issue. The challenges are there, they have been there, but there are challenges that in a way can be surmounted. For instance, you know the problem, program we have rolled out is capital intensive. It requires money to roll it out. We must, you conceive the idea, then you try to actualize it. You need to develop an app. Uh, that one costs money. Uh, you need to market. That one costs money. Because for people to know that they can actually register with you, they must know that you exist. Yes. We have also faced that challenge of people being skeptical at the effectiveness of the whole program. We know, you know, we are in a society where people believe what they have already seen, mm -hmm. not what they are hearing. That has been a challenge. We have had challenges even from personal disabilities themselves. Others saying, no, this is a scam, this is what, you know, the doubting tomatoes, because they are so used to people not providing solutions to them that when you propose something that is kind of revolutionizing the, 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 the scene, they think that no, this one can't be true. Mm. So with the time, they come to accept. We have received messages even on social media pages, now people trying to, people who in the beginning sent negative comments, now saying, please guide me on how to register Colleen. So that one to us, we take it positively and we duly guide. In most organizations, the major question to consider is usually whether their initiatives are sustainable. And I pose this question to Kennedy. Is Riziki Source a sustainable solution? Yeah, some critics are saying maybe it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. But to us, we think it is sustainable so long as <laughs> Personal disability themselves are still in existence. Mm -hmm. So long as we can make efforts to obtain funds to continue rolling it out. And with programs like the idea we have just hinted of bringing the successful people together, mm -hmm. with time we believe they'll see sense in this and be able to even support it also mm -hmm. because we have seen the value in because it has been able to turn their lives around. According to Kennedy, Riziki Sos will be here with us for a long while. Person with disability don't need tokenism. They need real empowerment. One of the ways through which you can empower them is by providing them with opportunities to work for themselves, fend for themselves. I would tell employers that they don't know what they're missing. Those who don't have People with disabilities within their ranks are missing something great that they'll soon discover. First of all, loyalty and dedication to the job. 
And even as Kennedy has shared with us the successes, the limitations, and the insights about Riziki Sauce, he has a word of advice to those who are interested in replicating this solution. I would like to advise people to know that it's a noble idea. If somebody wish to replicate it, that will be very good and we'll behave very happy because we'll be building the society. But now, they should also know that it comes with challenges, it comes with costs that you love to bear, it will come with a, a lot of requirements to do campaigns by word of mouth, by other means, Really, it's not something you roll out easily. Yeah, you'll be dealing with a society that is stereotyped in a certain manner. So come on board knowing that those challenges must be surmounted for you to be successful in rolling out a program of this nature. Many special thanks to Solutions Journalism Network Africa Initiative for making this episode possible. See you in the next feature.